<clears throat> Hi there. Aloha Milton here and today we're going to do some work on Kato number fours that I've pulled out of the yard on my layout to make them a little better. One of the things I found that's a real issue with these is that the frog is not um, level when you get them out of the box. Um, a lot of times this narrower end of the frog here is low. And I don't know if you can see that there. You can see how that those chrome rails, the steel card rails, are higher than the frog. Wow, well, it's being kind of pesky as far as focus, but hopefully you can see that right there. It's something you can really feel with your fingernail and, and feel with your finger the uh, the drop. And then this end tends to be a little more level, but still a little down. Um, a little bit low. And so um, I like to take this frog out and put shims on the bottom to level it to these tracks so that it's perfectly level and that makes trains run through this Kata number four a lot better. Um, there's some other things I do as well. This thin sheet of styrene supports the point from below so it's not a bridge between this pivot and this bracket so that as the train rolls over it has a little support underneath it and actually this one's a little forward I'd like to actually put it in there or there um, this one I have one space farther back in relation to the switch lever and I even on some I think I put it as far back as um, like middle more middle area um, in this area where this is fully back like along that one and um, <clears throat> the thing with these points is those black rails underneath with the wood texture on them the ra the point is up above those it's not sliding on those so it's a bridge from there that point this little crimp hinge to this plate here with this plastic pivot and I found I, I was looking at it and I was seeing trains roll onto this and seeing this pivot around and, and like just move and it does less so with this piece of styrene in there which is taller than those black rails by just a tiny bit you can see that little white edge where it's not been painted and it's taller than those black rails and it just fits right underneath and the the point rests right on it and slides real easy and this thinnest styrene that we commonly get at the hobby shop works great for that I suggest check your styrene box, you probably have some because it's that thin stuff that's kind of flexible. Um, I could measure it with a micro calipers. I suppose that would be kind of due diligence. It's about 0.4 millimeters, the styrene. I think got an inch. Um, 0.016 inches. I don't know, know what that is. I generally work in metric, but um, anyway, it's very narrow, and it's pretty typical. It's just that thin, flexible styrene that um, is used quite a lot in scratch building. So this stuff, you cut a strip of it, narrow enough to fit into there. And this one doesn't have one, so I'll just put one in there right now and show you what goes on with that. It just slides right in underneath, and I think I want this one to be back here underneath along here. I, I almost want to put two in and just support it right in the middle of the bridge between this point and this point because there's no support underneath the point underneath the, those two. spots, I guess we'll call them, since this is called a point, I'm going to call these spots where the point is attached. This curved metal piece that comes out from it and is attached to this and then where it's crimped to this pivot here. Um, I just don't like the train running for months on end. I run a lot of trains and I don't like them pushing down on that because it does loosen it up, especially this this pivot up here can get, seems to like it'll get a little loose over time 
and I think this is helping the train run over the point without moving it around because it has, with this, it has support right underneath it. So without further ado, slide that right underneath there and it just goes right underneath and generally yeah, it'll curve up at the very tip and you need a pin or something to just push that, push the tip of it. Um, probably help to move the switch into a different position. That will help me get this in there. Push down on it while sliding it, and I'll just slide right underneath there. And you can see it slides easily. It's not putting any, um, these points are on it just barely, like perfectly, because they're aligned with the bottom of the rail. Um, and the rail is crimped on these spots to the ties, but it stands up a little from the ties. There's actually a little space underneath, tiny little bit of space, and even more so in between. And this piece of styrene fits in there, slides underneath, puts support in the middle of the rail. Um, like most good industrial mechanisms that have, you know, weight on a beam over a gap, it's better to have a shorter distance between the points, especially if it's just a thin kind of loose piece like this. Um, once this is in there, especially this outside rail, it has a flat angle to the bottom. See that? There's a bend, it's an L-shape, and it has a flat bottom, and that slides on the surface of this really nicely. And when a train goes over it, the train's pushing down on that L-shape on this flat piece of styrene, and it rolls through um, better. I do believe on one or two switches where this was looser than this one, I had issues with trains derailing, and I do believe this helped. Anything to just kind of push on the edge of it, it slides in easy. I don't secure it with anything, I leave it unglued. It just sits in there, it's not going anywhere. Um, and I think it really helps support those points from underneath. And as you can see on like this one, I painted it a little bit, but I left the area under the points unpainted. Um, on one of them on the layout, I just went ahead and painted it and the paint was a thin, smooth layer of acrylic paint and it doesn't seem to upset the points at all. Um, so you can go, I, I can go ahead and paint the whole thing gray and make it pretty much disappear into the track and it, it won't be an issue um, as long as I don't let the paint attach to the points. The, an end scale wheel can be turned that far like especially on um, coupler mounted trucks if the couplers are for whatever reason like if I have a train coming a down slope into a turn with curvature I know it's, that's not the best situation um, but I don't have a lot of space and I gotta do some weird things with track work. <laughs> anyway, um, had I, I saw it happening. The, the wheel was turned so far it was hitting this point and riding up on it. And so this, something like this helps. Um, and then, anyway, you can see what that is. It's just a tiny little bent piece of rail. I took a little piece of flex track scrap and put it in there. And this is a piece, I'm trying to do the same thing with a piece of balsa wood, that little gray bit in there. And I'm yeah, I'm going to just remove that right now, and I'm going to make a piece of rail that goes in there instead because the rail looks better, looks more prototypical. All right, this is leveling the frog on Okada number four. This one's got a significant drop. Um, hopefully you can camera will focus and you can see where those points are low. Um,
it's just not a smooth transition. This part's lower than these. Um, this end, it's a little low, not much. It's almost flat. This end, there's a significant bump. You can see. Uh, come on, camera. Hopefully it'll focus and you can see in there, see how high those are compared to that. You can see there that on this side right there and right there. Let me get rid of that lip. So I'm going to disassemble this. I've got those screws lined up the way they go in, so I know where they went. Um, here's the inside, and to do a frog leveling, you got to remove this screw here, which holds the frog in. This is frog power, and this is this you know is either frog power or no frog power, and it just jumps this panel to this panel of conductive um, PCB trace, and so. With it in this position, I have frog power on, and this is the screw that actually takes the power up into the frog and holds the frog in place. So you take that screw out. It's a different kind of screw than these, so I don't have to worry about remembering that too much. This can fall out, so I generally put my finger on it. And then... Pop the frog out, and what I need to do, and I already know from experience, I'm using Kapton tape to shim these frogs to height. Kapton tape is a tape that's used in electronics manufacturing. It's non-conductive, heat resistant, and standard for using with electronics. So I figure it's a good thing to use here. Um, it's this yellow tape that you'll see on a lot of electronics. Comes in various widths. I think this is like an inch width. I get this stuff. It's just handy to have around. I have wider stuff too. I actually have a lot of it because it's used as a um, surface to print 3D prints on in certain circumstances with certain materials. Um, but it's good to have a bit around just for doing hobby electronics. Um, so I just need tiny bits. So I already have a little square and I'm gonna even cut it in half or a little rectangle. And I'm gonna use tiny bits of this on this frog. Got a tiny little square of it. Barely stand, I dropped it. And then it fell glue side down, which is pain. Okay, so I've got my little square. And I know I want this narrow end to be higher. Put that guy right back in there. Gently. Squeeze it in place, feel it. Man, it still feels a little low on this end. This end feels good. Very close to perfect. And this end here still feels low. This piece for whatever reason, is going to need three levels of capped on tape on the one end. Three levels of capped on tape. But that's not, yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Just can feel it with my fingertip that it just, the rails are the same height. This one actually seems 
Oh, just tiny bit low still. This front one's perfect. And this one, that only used one level. Yeah, that, um, that'll work. So I did three layers of Kapton little shims on the front and one layer on the back, and that leveled this perfectly. And other ones I've had to do two and one. Um, you'll just have to see if you're going to do this on your switches, what works for you. Um, and different brands of this tape are probably going to be slightly different thicknesses. I don't recommend scotch tape. And certainly not a paper tape. It's going to get gummy gunk on there. This capped on tape won't leave any residue either on the part really and it's it's just a good thing to have around. This attaches the frog. Right. Right there. And when doing screws in plastic, this is actually into metal on the back side, but still I like to back off until I feel the tip of the of the threads that the screw is trying to mate with. You reverse, like you're loosening it. And you'll feel a click, and that is the tip of the threads on the screw dropping down into place past the tip of the threads on the nut or the the um, insert or whatever you're trying to screw it into. So now that I felt it drop, oh, thank you. Ah, oh, living in the city, yeah. Um, it's hard to film a YouTube video with the way people just love to honk at anything and everything to dump their emotions on everyone around them. <sighs> okay. When inserting a screw into a small part like this, I like to loosen until I feel it drop into place. It clicks, and that's the tip of the threads on the screw dropping down into place on the tip of the threads on the nut or the insert that you are screwing into. So now that this is clicked and dropped into place, I can screw it in on the same track that it came out of without worry of cross-threading, which is a real concern with any plastic product with a metal screw. Metal and plastic has uh, a real good chance of cross-threading and messing up that um, those screw threads permanently in the plastic if you're not real careful about how you um, insert screws and attach them. So that's done. Frog's reattached. Frog power's still on. I didn't even have to remove that one. These screws go in. Well, it's reversed. They're patterned out as if this was sitting this way, and I know that. So this one goes in here. And again, this is plastic, metal into plastic, so this one very much I want to get it kind of straight and loosen turn. And it'll click into place. It'll drop into those threads, and you'll feel it's then screw in very easily, going back in right where it came out of, and you don't end up with cross-threading and ruining your plastic part and having to put in like a bunch of Loctite or something to recreate threads that are not very functional as far as actually removing and inserting screws at that point. Um, but they will hold if you put Loctite in there and then screw a screw in, you'll be able to bite into that dried up material in there or some glue or something and um, it's a way to reattach a screw that you've stripped in a plastic product but you know it's better just not in the first place check that the spring wire is in between the two pegs there and it is that's crucial and if it's not you can move its position through this port um, I suggest if you're coming at it from this direction, you want to move the switch so it's fully over in this direction, like that, and then you got to lift the wire up and pop it into place if it was on this side. If it was on the other side, I'd come at it from this side and lift it over and pop it into place in the middle. Um, 
So it's in place. It's got its styrene support for the points for trains to roll over this and have vertical support of their load as the wheel comes to the midpoint of the uh, point because it's only supported at the tip and at the base without this. So I've got that and everything slides nicely and it's fully closing and fully opening because the spring's in, in position correctly. Um, and I've shimmed the frog so that this is nice and level. Actually, with the screw inserted, it still feels a little bit down in front. Oh, God, just way less now, but still, I feel like it's not perfect. It's close to perfect, but it's not quite perfect. You can see there's a little bit of shiny above that frog. It's just the tiniest little bit of rise, but it's rolled at this point, like the tip of that rail is, has a, <clears throat> a little roll to it. And, it's not a sharp edge. Um, this one's not being easy. This one's taking a lot of effort. I had to put an extra shim and it's still not totally flat. I can probably actually use an extra one on the back and the front. Four on the back, two on, or I call this the front, so four on the front and two on the back would actually be, I think, right for this frog as far as shims made out of kept on tape. Um, but it's all sealed up and it's really close to, oh man. I mean, it's a pain to pull them out of the plaster and all that and replaster, so I, I may revisit this one. But that's the full demo on <clears throat> messing with these to improve the frog leveling to the rails leading in and out of it and putting a support platform underneath the points because they're kind of um, thinner, more flexible metal than a rail is and they're only attached at the very tip and the very base so that um, it just eliminates a little bit of the play that you get was a trains rolling over them which as they age can get worse without support as well. Um, as well as you've seen my method for, or at least the results of my method for just bending a little piece of flex track or some spare track and putting it in there on the end of the point as a uh, flange guide leading into the point so that the flange can't be, uh, the wheel can't be at an angle and have the flange run right into the end of the point, which will like make it ride up or derail. I've seen that happen. All right, that's that for the Cotto number four for now.